As a particle moves around in XYZ space, its location is given by its position vector, R of t, which follows the object through time. The tail of the position vector remains at the origin, while its head continues to be located at the position of the object. Here is the position vector at time t2. We have the position vector r of t equals x of t i hat plus y of t j hat plus z of t k hat. For example, we might have position vector r of t equals 3t squared i hat minus 5t cubed j hat minus 4t k hat. Take the differential of the position vector to have dr equals dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat. With vector f equals mass times vector acceleration, which is mass times the time derivative of the vector velocity and vector dr equals the velocity vector times dt. The relations for work become the integral of f dot dr, but f is m dv dt and dr is v dt. We cancel the dt's and we have the integral of m v dot dv. This can be written as one half the differential of v squared, which would be 2v dv. We integrate this from an initial to a final velocity, and we get 1 half m v f squared minus 1 half m v i squared, which we've been saying is the change in kinetic energy k. When we write the work as the integration of vector f dot dr, we write vector f in terms of its components, fx i hat plus fyj hat plus fc k hat dot the differential dr which a minute ago we decided was dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat. We have a dot b equals ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. So this dot product can be written as the product of the x components, which is this one, fx dx, plus the product of the y components, which is fy dy, plus the product of the z components, fz dz. The one work integration is equivalent to three integrals. We page down. Here's the work integration again. And we take this example. We want to find the work done by the vector force 4x squared i hat plus 4y j hat plus 4k hat through the displacement from the xyz point. 2 minus 4, 3, to the final location at x equal 5, y equal 6, z equal 1. To find the work, we integrate the x part of the force, which is 4x squared, from x equals 2 to 5, plus the integration of the y component of the force, which is 5y, from the initial to the final y locations, which is y equals minus 4 up to 6. And we integrate the z component of the force, which is 4, from the initial z location to the final z location, which is from 3 to 1. Integration gives a total work of 198 joules. The force vector points in different directions throughout space. And the differential path vector dr points in various directions. But f dot dr continues to give the portion of the force that lies along dr. When the work done is independent of the path, then the force is said to be conservative. So the work done will be zero around any closed path that begins and ends at the same point. A second example, the work done by vector f equals 4y i hat plus xy j hat newtons through the displacement from 0, 0 to 1, 1 meters along the path x equal y is found by integrating 4y dx plus the integral of xy dy. In this integration, variable y is equal to x, so the integrand 4y can be replaced with the integrand 4x. In this integral, the x is replaced with y, so we have an integral of y squared and we get 2.33 joules. 
Instead of integrating along the path y equals x, let's integrate along the path y equals x squared. If the work done by the force is independent of the path, then the force is said to be conservative. Here are the work integrals along the path y equals x squared. The first integrand, 4y, becomes 4x squared. The second integrand, xy, becomes y to the 1.5 power, and the integration gives 1.73 joules. Along the previous path, y equals x, the work done was 2.33 joules, so this is a non-conservative force. Kinetic friction is a non-conservative force. If you push a box along level ground from the origin to the point 1,1, then the work done against kinetic friction is mu k m g l, where l is the length of the path. Take the distance from 0, 0 to 0, 1 as the unit of length l0. The length of path A is the square root of 2 l0, and the work along path A is the square root of 2 mu k m g l0. The length of path B is 2 l0 and the work along path B is 2 mu k m g l0. Since the work depends on the path, we conclude that friction is a non-conservative force. A closed path is one that begins and ends at the same point. When the work done against a force along a closed path is not zero, then the force is identified to be non-conservative. If any closed path can be found that gives a non-zero work, then the force is identified to be non-conservative. To indicate that the path is a closed loop, we put a circle on the integral sign. The gravitational force is conservative. The work done by you against the gravitational force while moving the mass through a vertical distance delta h is independent of the path taken even if that path is full of horizontal and vertical loops. You do positive work while raising the mass against the gravitational force and you do negative work while allowing the mass to move downward. No matter the path, the network done by U is W equals mg delta H which is the negative of the change in stored gravitational potential energy. The work done by gravity is the negative of the work done by you. The mechanical work done either by you or by gravity and the change in gravitational potential energy depend only on the change in vertical height, delta H. Is the constant force F equals 2 I hat also a conservative force? To determine this, we integrate around any closed path. In the selected path, we break the loop into four segments of length L, starting at point 1 and traversing clockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, and back to 1. We break the closed loop integration into the four pieces and look to see whether or not we get zero. Vector dr always points in the direction of the path at every moment along the closed loop. Along segment 2, 3, Vector dr points downward in the minus j hat direction, and the force points in the plus side direction, so there is 90 degree angle between these two vectors, giving the dot product f dot dr equals f cosine 90 dr equals zero. Along segment 4, 1, vector dr points upward in the plus j direction, and the force still points in the plus i direction, so again there is 90 degrees between those two vectors, giving f dot dr equals zero. Along segment 1, 2, both vectors dr and f point rightward in the plus i hat direction, so we have f dot dr equals f cosine of zero dr, and the integral f dot dr equals plus 2l. Along segment 3, 4, vector dr points leftward in the minus i hat direction and the force points in the plus i hat direction, so there is a 180 degree angle between those two vectors, giving f dot dr equals minus f dr and the integral f dr equals minus 2l. 
the sum of the four integrations is plus 2L plus 0 minus 2L plus 0 equals 0. So the force is conservative. The upper and lower segments cancel in this constant force F equals 2I hat. But the upper and lower segments do not cancel in the case of the force F equals 2Y I hat. This vector field points along the x-axis everywhere, but increases in magnitude as y increases. When y is 1, f equals 2 i hat. When y is 2, f equals 4 i hat. When y equals 3, the vector force equals 6 i hat. When y equals 0, then the force f equals 0 also. So we'll take our path to be this square starting at point 1 and going around clockwise again to point 2, 3, 4, and back to 1. The segment from 3 to 4 lies at y equals 0, and so the force is equal to 0. This is the reason that the lower segment cannot cancel the integration along the upper segment. As in the previous example, f dot dr equals 0 on the two sides because there is a 90 degree angle between those two vectors. Since the work done around the closed loop beginning at point 1 and ending at point 1 is not 0, the force F equals 2Y I hat is not conservative. Consider a stack of boards separated by bearings which stay in place but spin, and that each board is moving with the vector velocity V equals 2Y I hat. At y equals 0, the lowest board has v equals 0. The middle board at y equal 1 has v equals 2i. And the upper board at y equals 2 has velocity equals 4i hat. Since the boards are moving at different velocities, we can tell that the bearings will spin. We can tell by looking that the vector field v equals 2i i hat is not conservative because the bearings will spin. The local spin of a vector field was first examined 200 years ago, and it is pronounced as the curl or rotation of the vector field. If the curl is zero, then the field is irrotational. We met the partial derivative that gives the slope along a single axis of the coordinate system. The del operator contains the slope along all three axes. In rectangular coordinates, we have del equals i hat times the partial with respect to x plus j hat partial with respect to y plus k hat partial with respect to z. And the curl of the vector a can be written in terms of this determinant which is meant to be a mnemonic for this mixture of derivatives. The i hat component of the curl of a is the mixture of the partial with respect to y of the z component of a minus the partial with respect to z of the y component of a. We write i hat and then minus j hat and then plus k hat. For the j hat component, it's the partial of the z component of a with respect to x minus the partial of the x component of a with respect to z. The k hat component is partial a y with respect to x minus partial a z with respect to y. Notice that the i hat component has a mixture of y and z components. The j hat component of the curl is a mixture of the x and z components. The k hat component of the curl is a mixture of the x and y components. For example, we might have vector a equals 3xy i hat plus 2zj hat plus 4y squared k hat. Other notations are curl of A or rotation of A. The curl produces a vector result with I, J, and K components. For the force in the previous example, F equals 2Y I hat, the curl of F is found by putting the components of vector F in the third row of the determinant. The X component is 2Y, but the Y and Z components are zero. For the i hat component of this curl, we pretend as if this first column is not there, and then we do partial of zero with respect to y 
minus partial of zero with respect to z. Those are both zero. We switch to minus j hat and temporarily cross out the second column. We do the partial of zero with respect to x minus the partial of 2y with respect to z. Both of those are zero. We're back to plus k hat. Temporarily cross out the third column. We have the partial of zero with respect to x minus the partial of 2y with respect to y, which is two. So the curl of vector f equals 2y i hat is minus 2k hat. This non-zero curl means that this force is not conservative. The resulting curl points in the k direction. As another example, the curl of the vector a equals x squared y squared k hat is found by putting the x, y, and z components of vector a in the third row, which are 0, 0, and x squared y squared. For the i, j, and k hat components, with its mixture of partial derivatives. First we cross out the i column, do partial of x squared y squared with respect to y, which is 2x squared y, minus partial of zero. Then we say minus j hat, cross out the middle j hat column, and write the partial respect to x of x squared y squared, which is 2xy squared minus partial of zero with respect to z, and then plus k hat, cross out the third or k hat column. We have partial of nothing minus a partial of nothing. So the curl of this vector a is 2x squared y i hat minus 2xy squared j hat. This vector a is not conservative. When the curl of a vector force f is zero, which is written del cross f equals zero, then that force can be obtained from the derivative of a scalar potential v. In one dimension we have the x component of force equals minus dv dx, and in three dimensions we have f equals minus del v equals minus partial v with respect to x i hat, minus partial v with respect to y j hat, minus partial v with respect to z, k hat. We've always written the vector f in terms of its components, fx i hat plus fy j hat plus fz k hat. This vector equation is equivalent to the three scalar relations, f sub x equals minus partial v with respect to x, f sub y equals minus partial v with respect to y, and f sub z equals minus partial v with respect to z. For example, if v equals minus 2x, then f sub x equals minus partial v with respect to x equals plus 2. If the potential v equals minus cxy, then the vector force f equals cyi hat plus cxj hat. The curl of the vector f is zero when each of these three components are zero. And this means that partial fz with respect to y equals partial fy with respect to z. Similarly, these two parcels match, and so do these two. Putting the y component of force equal to minus partial v with respect to y, and the x component of force equals minus partial v with respect to x in the last of these gives the second partial derivative of v with respect to y and with respect to x equals the second partial derivative of v with respect to x and with respect to y. Exchanging the order of partial derivatives is valid for any function that is smooth and continuous. Functions in physics represent natural phenomena which are always smooth and continuous. The position vector r equals x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat has differential dr equals dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat using a dot b equals ax bx plus ay by plus az bz 
to form the dot product of the two vectors del v and dr. By combining x parts, y parts, and z parts, we get partial v with respect to x dx plus partial v with respect to y dy plus partial v with respect to z dz. This is the same thing as the total derivative of the scalar function v of x, y, and z, which is dv equals partial v with respect to x dx plus partial v with respect to y dy plus partial v with respect to z dz. So we have dv equals del v dot dr. When the curl of a force is zero, which is written del cross f equals zero, then that force can be obtained from the derivative of a scalar potential v. We have vector force f equals minus del v. If we integrate f dot dr around the closed path, which begins and ends at the same point p, then the closed loop integral of f dot dr is converted first by switching the force f equals minus del v and then switch the integrand del v dot dr equals dv. Evaluated around the closed loop, we would have v at p minus v at p, which would be zero. These four items come as a set and are all true at once. A conservative force f has curl del cross f equals zero and can be obtained from a scalar potential f equals minus del v. The work integration f dot dr is independent of the path and the partial derivatives satisfy these three relations.